Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, this lecture for my students in International University of Technology Twentec, IUTT, Civil Engineering Semester 6. I have to welcome everybody for this virtual class after a very long time since we stopped um, regarding the coronavirus pandemic. I hope everyone is safe and sound and just um, talking about uh, resuming our lectures um, your last lecture wa was um, a field study tropic volume study in Shara Ali Abdul Mughni and this will be uh, discussed later inshallah in uh, the upcoming lecture for now we need to resume the last lecture um, we have already started in week four uh, which was about the parking uh, so uh, let's get started so we've we've um, we've taken uh, the parking um, um, terminologies and also the parking statistics and parking studies um, those are the parking statistics, uh, the parking accumulation and parking volume, uh, parking load, um, average parking duration, parking turnover, and parking index. Uh, we've talked also um, a very simple uh, parking statistics uh, demonstration. And uh, we, we actually worked a few examples or at least one and now we need to talk about the uh, parking surveys uh, talking about parking surveys um, they are actually conducted to collect a parking statistics, uh, statistics that we mentioned before like the parking index the parking turnover uh, and all of this stuff uh, they are, there are uh, three types of surveys. Um, in out survey, fixed period sampling, and the last one, um, license plate method of survey. So, talking about the first one, um, I got to check whether it's recorded or not. So the first type of survey is in out survey. In this kind of survey, um, we actually count the occupancy uh, in the selected parking space uh, taken at the beginning. So the total occupancy, okay, and then the number of vehicles entered so if i have a entry gate and exit one so those vehicles entered will be counted and the, those vehicles leave the parking space will be uh, will be also counted for a particular time intervals um so it's very simple um, and after we finish our survey the final occupancy in the parking is also taken so we take the occupancy at the beginning we also take the occupancy at the end and we count just those vehicles enter the parking space and those vehicles left the parking space very simple very easy what are the advantage of this? Um, it's only labor required is very less comparing to the uh, two other survey methods. But we, here we have a considerable disadvantage for, for that uh, kind of survey because we actually cannot get the time duration for which a particular vehicle used that parking lot and uh, also we cannot estimate 
the turnover, we cannot estimate the parking fare. The parking fare, um, which is uh, for e how much um, money each vehicle has to be charged. Um, I cannot estimate that without the parking duration, uh, unless it's going to be very simple, like what we have here in Sana'a and few parkings. Once you enter the parking, you just pay, like um, whether you're going to park for, for an hour, for five minutes, for five hours, it's the same. Um, and um, in that case, um, we don't have um, the ability to estimate the fare. We cannot charge people how much they, they have to pay. And at the same time, if we analyze uh, a parking space, uh, we cannot tell how much we can get from that uh, particular parking space. The fixed period sampling, it's almost the same, but we actually do that again every 15 minutes. I mean, the occupancy inside, we actually check them, not just only in the beginning, not only in, at, at the end of the survey, but also every 15 minutes or one hour. But if we put it here, like one hour, every one hour we check. Sometimes if I'm going to check every hour, uh, I started with 8 a.m. up to 9 a.m. Uh, if I have a vehicle enter that um, in that particular time at 8 a.m and just left 8 and 5 a.m. In that case, I, will, I, I, I won't be able to know that until I get my second check, which is on 9 a.m. So in that case, there is a chance to miss number of vehicles that actually uh, parked for a very short period of time. Uh, talking about the most accurate uh, method, which is license plate method. This results in the most accurate and also realistic data, which is actually the thing we do. Uh, as drivers, uh, we park for maybe five minutes, sometimes for 30 minutes, sometimes for, for more, for 10, 10 hours maybe. So here, every parking space is actually monitored, monitored either by workers or monitored by a camera. Okay, what that camera is, actually it's CCTV camera. Uh, so every parking bay or parking spot is being watched by a person or by a camera and every vehicle will occupy this parking sp spot or parking uh, bay will um, the camera or, or the person will capture the license plate will be actually captured and in that case I know that vehicle actually parked in which time and left in which time. So I know not any vehicle, the particular vehicle, because it's not that I know the first vehicle, the second vehicle, or the third. No, it's not accounting. It's regarding the license plate. I can check the camera. I can tell where that uh, vehicle has parked and where have where has left so it's uh, it's very accurate so uh, those are the advantages of uh, this method but we still have uh, one disadvantage of that which is actually it's either very labor intensive or if you're gonna use the CCTV cameras, will be pretty much expensive. 
Um, now we talk about the effects. Talking about the effects of parking, starting with uh, uh, the congestion, accident, environmental pollution, and obstruction to fire freighting operations. So hmm. um, we know that the parking spaces are very useful for the traffic and to accommodate those vehicles need to park. But we still have negative aspects that need to be considered. Starting with the congestion. So um, parking takes considerable street space leading to the lowering of the road capacity. In that case, we're talking about uh, in street parking. If we have a street and we allow those vehicles to park on one side, if I have three lanes, I only have two. This actually decreased considerably the, um, the street capacity, the highway capacity uh, of the road. So um, speed will be reduced. Why? Because I have people to park. Actually, in general, it's a result of uh, decreasing the road capacity, journey time, and the delay will actually increase. And in total, uh, the operational cost of the vehicle increases. Um, for example, uh, if I don't have in uh, Shorba, if I don't have a parking spot in street, I guess I can get more and, and, and much, much better capacity in that particular street. And maybe um, that traffic jam, uh, the horrible one, at 12 up to 2 a, uh, p.m. Uh, will be much less than, than it should be. And once you spend more time in your journey, it means the operational cost will be more and more. And this leads to great economical loss to the community. So we're talking about getting traffic jam. It increases the uh, operational cost of every vehicle. And it's not that easy. It's not something normal. It's not something just take it and, and take it easy. Every vehicle will spend more time, will spend more money uh, on its journey, which lead into economical loss. And our job as engineers is actually to make a balance for that, to provide in better highways, better roads, actually to avoid this economical loss to the community. Talking about the accident, uh, careless monitoring of parking and, and parking leads to accidents which are referred as parking accidents. It's a particular uh, type of accidents. We, we call them actually parking accidents. Um, if you actually go in your lane safely and someone in a angled uh, end street parking going out uh, on the reverse, this could actually uh, cause an accident here. We call this type of accident um, a, a parking accident. Uh, so this is unparking. Sometimes when they uh, decelerate and uh, stop to get into this space. Uh, sometimes this lead to rear end collision. And in that case, we, we don't call them uh, rear end collision, still also in the same category, parking accidents or parking collisions. And also carless opening of the doors. If we're talking about um, uh, the parallel parking, if we have um, like uh, a, 
having a parallel parking, um, you can just you know that you, you're gonna park on your on your right hand and you're gonna open uh, your door actually to the lane to the lane. So this actually lead into uh, a, a, a very very dangerous accident. Um, one more effect of parking are the environmental pollution. Stop and start in vehicles and closed spaces or on open spaces. Actually, that um, um, the emissions, or we can call them fumes, and also the noise. It's noisy if you have um, a very quiet area. Once you put I park in space there, it will um, affect the uh, uh, the peace of the area there. Um, sometimes, environmentally, we, we talk about aesthetic aspect of the beauty of the buildings. Sometimes if, if the design of the parking space not implemented and integrated into the design in a very good way, sometimes, and a lot of times, uh, it affects the aesthetic beauty of the buildings. Um, the last effect of the parking, parking spaces, um, obstruction to fire, fighting operations. Um, sometimes uh, the park vehicles may obstruct the movement of fire uh, firefighting vehicles. Uh, if you want to reach um, a, a building on street while those vehicles parked um, in front, uh, it will actually um, block those um, vehicles from accessing the, the, the area. And also if we have a building and we, need, uh, we, we got fire inside, in that case, um, we cannot just uh, um, go easily because if we have like four or five stories for parking spaces, this will be very, very difficult. It's not that easy to just uh, call all of these people to uh, take uh, the vehicles out just all of a sudden. It's impossible. So, talking about the parking requirements. Um, it's different from reference to reference, from a country to country, from city to city, from policy to policy. So, in general, for example, we have, if we have a residential plot area, less than 300 square meter, require only uh, community parking in that case, uh, if it's less than 300 square meter. But for a residential plot from 500 up to uh, 8,000 square meter, we need actually to provide a minimum of one-fourth, one-fourth of the open area should be reserved for parking. Uh, offices may require at least one parking space for every 70 square meter as parking area. Um, and also, um, if we're talking about restaurant, if you're going to design or uh, align uh, a space for a restaurant, you actually need to suggest every 10 seats in that restaurant should actually reserve a one parking space. But if we have a wedding hall or a cinema theater, every 20 seats requires, require a one parking space. Um, this can be applicable in, in Sana'a or in Yemen in general. Um, in the uh, developing country, but in the developed country, it's not applicable anymore. Uh, if we take uh, 
London as an example um, there is a very very limited parking space requirements um, maybe what we need here in Sana that every building should provide more parking space but this is not the case in London and maybe in Sana after 10 or 15 years because providing more um, parking spaces or parking spots uh, will will actually lead the, to uh, most of the people will actually pro, uh, uh, drive their own cars and and uh, and this will lead into a very very uh, heavy traffic jam and in that case uh, each building provide less parking spaces so I need to encourage block people from driving their own car and encourage them to use uh, we can say uh, public transportation whatever it is like trams subways trains or even buses or whatever but um, for now currently and for uh, the, the near future in Yemen we still need to apply uh, the just the normal requirements um, talking about the types of parkings mainly they are only two types on street and off streets what does that mean off streets it means not on the street you go on t into a very very specific uh, area that provide a parking spot inside that area so this is will be off street but if you park on street we call them just on street parking and this uh, could be parallel 30 degree parking 40, uh, 45 degree parking and 60 degree parking and right angle parking so this it gives you less parking spots because uh, if we have this lane on street so the car will park parallel to the uh, pedestrian walk path so here we have less parking spots and here will be more or the most and here we have less and it increases that way but also the, wa uh, the width of the lane here it could be a normal lane on the first case but if you go into those options these options 30, uh, 30 degree or 45 60 or, uh, or right angle parking you need a wider lane for parking so um, according to uh, one of these standards which is IRC uh, if we if we're designing a parking lot for um, a passenger cars or private cars the width of the um, the lane should be just 2 2.5 meters and the the length will be 5 meters that will be oh, that, uh, sh it should be enough to uh, occupy passenger car or um, a private car but if we're designing that for a commercial trucks yeah, like uh, jet buses or uh, something in that size the the width of the lane or the parking spot shouldn't be less than 3.75 and the length will be 7.5 meters especially for uh, in commercial um, areas here we have the parallel parking I have here the length of the street uh, a particular uh, distance um, on the street and we can actually tell how much parking spots can be provided or implemented in into that space but if we go into that it will be different it will be like a triangular uh, triangular calculation because we have a 30 degree here and the length of the car is actually affecting the width 
and also affecting the length and also the width of the vehicle affecting the width and also affecting the length so it's very simple and you can just go back here to know if you have a particular distance and you you need to check um, for how many spots can be implemented there you need to check just do it and uh, like consider uh, consider a hundred meter uh, of length and I need to tell how much vehicles a passenger cars can be parked in that uh, particular um, distance whether it's parallel or 30 degree parking or 45 degree parking 60 and here we have a right angle okay to compare between right angle and the completely opposite one which is the parallel one we know that here we have less width of the lane so a normal lane can accommodate a parking spot here but th that is not the case here if we go into that case this will be wider much wider than a normal lane and here it's it should be if it's for passenger cars it should be like 5.5 meters or 5 meters so it's wider much wider than a normal lane but it will be uh, it will ac accommodate more vehicles here if i have here 2.5 so both of those those vehicles five meter which is only one vehicle for a parallel park and time now we talk about the off street parking to be honest it's it's very difficult to know what is the best or the most accurate alignment because it depends um, on the area we have but if i have a, a re rectangular one or a squared one uh, it is easy to um, to be aligned but it will be very very difficult if we're designing a parking lot in a commercial building or a residential building it's a much harder job to be done but um, easy job but to make it safe and simple you need just to consider that you have uh, an entry um, gate and exit gate they have they must be split you cannot use the same in, uh, entry gate to be the exit gate you will have a lot of jam from those vehicles coming in to get and a lot of jam from those vehicles coming out from the parking space um, and also for this parking lot or car park um, it is good to be designed this way even for evacuation in any um, serious situation if you need to evacuate the vehicles inside there it will be much easier to be uh, to use this kind of alignment so here we have the end of our lecture now i hope you uh, uh, get the benefit the the uh, targeted um, uh, goals of uh, of what we think you you need to uh, to understand from this lecture um, I hope that if you have any question just put them there um, uh, just uh, start a discussion there on our uh, group in Google classroom and we can I can answer uh, every single question of you um, one more thing you need to review uh, your traffic study just please go and review them uh, because we need to work on those uh, statistics um, 
starting from the traffic flow and also from the uh, ADT and also the um, expansion factors we need to discuss uh, so be prepared for uh, next lecture inshallah um, I hope this lecture will be very useful for you um, and inshallah see you next time thank you